Hi, this is Ed. Welcome to the Outer Light, of course. Uh, before I go on, of course, I'm going to thank my Patreons for keeping me going, for helping me out with their support. It means a lot. Also note, I've had a lot of computer problems of late. I'm trying to fix them, but the production of my content has slowed down a bit. So should have that solved for the next few hours, even if I have to reformat my entire computer system once again something that happens quite often lately anyway I'm just going to report on this but I've got a lot of links to cover because this Seth Rich investigation of course the turns that have taken lately a number of other breadcrumbs have come to light of course if you want to know more information about the investigation of Seth Rich one great channel which isn't covered in the mainstream media of course or any of this but is the great and detective work of investigator George Webb. Check out George Webb's YouTube channel for more information since I think that George Webb is an excellent investigator. Cannot recommend him enough. Now before I go on to this I just want to go into a couple of little breadcrumbs. First of all it's becoming obvious now that Seth Rich is in fact the actual DNC leaker working with WikiLeaks and was shot 10 days uh, WikiLeaks publishing this information within a 10 day time frame of when Seth Rich was actually killed and of course the director of WikiLeaks at the time McFadden actually died of cancer in October also the WikiLeaks lawyer of Julian Assange actually was hit by a train all of these within a very short time period of these leaks happening themselves it's like some kind of coordinated effort in order to control the flow of information and whistleblowers once again organized by corrupt individuals probably those the same ones that worship like big black suns and black satin cubes in my opinion but I won't go into that too much let's go into WikiLeaks that's another video uh, first of all this is WikiLeaks of course this is the WikiLeaks Twitter if we go down here we can see that they're giving us the breadcrumbs of course WikiLeaks tweeted this in October last year which blew a lot of people's minds let's have a look at this tweet in question this is from the DNC leaked emails Podesta I'm definitely for making an example of a suspected leaker whether or not we have any real basis for it Podesta emails so here again this is John Podesta of course a year before anything happened with Seth, uh, Seth Rich uh, that's a long time in the future from the date of this email of course but it does show you a philosophy with inside the elite democratic system in order to go out and make examples of people the question is why would WikiLeaks retweet this now now all the Seth, new, Seth Rich twist is actually coming to form and all this new information is coming to light if you have not heard of course Federal investigator has come forward to Fox News citing that he's actually seen the emails from Seth Rich to WikiLeaks directly and that basically in a nutshell Seth Rich was the leaker himself. Of course you have other independent testimony on the same day coming from a private detective, former uh, DC homicide detective as well, retired, came forward and he also stated for the record that Seth Rich was absolutely the DNC leaker so really there's not really any kind of real more confirmation we need apart from seeing the actual emails on the laptops themselves of course we're having this shadow confirmation from WikiLeaks because of course they cannot reveal their sources and for the security of their operation and for the leakers they must not go out and actually cite that these are the actual leakers themselves WikiLeaks and in fact Julian Assange as well has posted these little details with Julian Assange of course the founder of WikiLeaks himself who would have known who the DNC leaker is he he actually tweeted if we go down here a little bit we can see that he tweeted retweeted the investigation from the family private investigator stating that Seth Rich was the actual WikiLeaks leaker of course, uh, WikiLeaks has posted a $20,000 reward for information about who Seth Rich murder, murderer was, or leading to the conviction of the murderer. 
But that's not all. Of course, there's a $100,000 plus reward out there from numerous different parties allocating that's a huge prize fund for the people that actually find out who murdered Seth Rich. So for the FBI investigators, or maybe retired FBI that are in the building themselves, they could actually claim the reward if they wanted, although I'm not sure if that would actually happen. Let's go on to a couple of little other breadcrumbs just so you can get the narrative of what's happening right now. Of course, uh, Kim.com, famous, who actually lives in New Zealand, has stated Seth Rich was WikiLeaks DNC source. Seth was killed for that reason. Seth is one of the many Clinton victims. Seth is a hero for preventing Clinton. Of course, Kim.com Kim is associated with the community, I guess, of WikiLeaks, um, or maybe a uh, encompassing community so he might have some intel into that but of course it doesn't take a rocket science to f scientist to figure out what's actually happening here's another post if we go to reddit conspiracy this is all over the place at the moment and here's the key detail in all of this this is really the essence of it because if it's proved that Seth Le Rich was the DNC leaker and let's say the murderers were caught, but if there was just information proving he was the leaker, then in actual fact that destroys the narrative of the Russian hack, because it would have came internally from within the DNC, from Seth Rich, who was leaking that information. That means that Russia would not have hacked the DNC to get those leaks for WikiLeaks. So you can see how this is a turning point within the major push by the mainstream media pushing the Russian hack all the way to actual investigations and senators calling for a mass in investigation and of course the FBI investigation by James Comey was fired by Donald Trump. So if Seth Rich leaked the DNC emails then that means there was no Russian hack. No Russian hack means the entire Russian narrative is fake. That's why the media is so desperate. And of course, everyone following my channel knows that there's one other time in the last year that we've felt this, this massive push happening, and that was around the Pizzagate investigation. The Pizzagate forums were banned on Reddit. A massive fake news narrative unseen in history was rolled out against Pizzagate researchers. Ben Swan was in fact fired from his job for covering it, as well as a number of journalists. And the push was like a wave against researchers which only, of course, made researchers adapt. And the investigation definitely not only continues, but it subscribed maybe thousands upon thousands of other researchers to join the fold. So let's have a look at some other little key details. Now, this should go to the actual WikiLeaks document itself. Here we are on WikiLeaks, of course. You can see the URL there if you want to type it in. This is, of course, the email data from 2015 the notorious email that goes on agreed happy to call David call me crazy but I think if we can survive the next month it will be possible maybe even straightforward to get our arms around this one there is an actual campaign I'm definitely for making an example of a suspected leaker whether or not we have any real basis for it so what it looks like John Podesta is saying here, if we're going to interpret it, is that basically John Podesta is willing to actually make examples of leakers that haven't actually done anything. So think about that philosophy for a moment and what kind of individual will be capable of actually just going out there and targeting even innocent people. In this case, roll it a year forward and think how they would have re reacted to in fact Seth Rich. And then you might have yourself a narrative that's starting to be weaved together. Of course, I do not know if John Podesta uh, actually took out Seth Rich. I just don't know. But I do know that the DNC is absolutely rotten to the core. As numerous reports have come forward now, including the DNC being sued for mass corruption by multiple different lawsuits now. So that is to think about if you've got an organization that's on the surface publicly massively corrupt as been shown in fact favoring Bernie Sanders I'm uh, sorry favoring Hillary Clinton over Bernie Sanders conspiring to get Hillary Clinton elected 
taking donations from Bernie Sanders supporters and using them to get Hillary Clinton elected. Totally corrupt organization that passed the debate questions on to Hillary Clinton was writing the scripts for, in fact, the Colbert Report as shown in the WikiLeaks. Then you have just got something akin to some kind of mafia organization that will literally do anything to stay in control. Let's have a look at some other little clues here. So let's outline the entire event in entirety, in totality, and see what was really happening. Excellent post by this person here for outlining all these key details. So let's take a look here. First of all, of course, Seth Rich was the DNC staffer that was murdered. He was shot down, shot in the back, and the DC police called it a botched robbery, quote unquote. Of course, the private investigator came forward and stated, former homicide detective, it's worth noting, with inside the DNC police department, retired, of course, had sources within, said that he spoke to his sources, i.e. work colleagues, and they stated that they were ordered to drop it, to leave it and close and shut it down, make sure that the investigation didn't proceed, which is probably how the laptop ended up in the... Uh, in the FBI because if there's anybody that looks like they're going to shut something down now it's James Comey of course was in charge of the FBI if you've got someone like James Comey on board then no doubt put the laptop in his hands and he'll probably be washing it or wiping it with a cloth like Clinton said and there'll be nothing left on it 10th of July 2016 Seth was found shot in the back jewelry phone wallet was all still in his possession. The police filed it as a robbery. 22nd of July. Wikileaks begins dumping captured John Podesta emails. So it looks like John Podesta is definitely in the narrative, of course, I know about the John Podesta emails. I've done entire videos about them. I'm just stating in this context, he's a major figure. <clears throat> Remember from the book Shattered, Another classic attack on the DNC lately. Not completely. Of course, the book Shattered was written by DNC insiders, which were taken into the campaign to cover it. So it's biased towards the DNC in a lot of aspects. But it has a lot of classic details in it towards the ending, stating that John Podesta, Robbie Mook, etc. were conspiring already to push the Russian narrative, the fact that the Russians hacked the election. Why were they so fervent in doing that? Of course, they didn't want to trace any kind of relationship back to faulting them for running a flawed campaign. And maybe also, it's possible, if we're going to speculate, that they probably might even indeed have blood on their hands. And of course, that's my perspective. That's what I think. But you guys will have to make up your own decision on that. Go out and do the research. You might come to a different conclusion either way. You're going to find more data which you can add to this ongoing investigation even if your hypotheses are different. 9th of August 2016, WikiLeaks offers $20,000 for information on Seth Rich's murder. Classic. Of course WikiLeaks can't reveal their sources so they have to do it in a shadowed way. They have to give you clues and these clues are blatant now. Of course Julian Assange and WikiLeaks retweeting the same narrative that's been projected by the policeman, the federal investigator, etc. The exact same narratives they are tweeting. In that case, they finger the person, I believe, as John Podesta, although that's my speculation on the email, I don't know. 10th of August 2016, DC crisis handler turned Seth Rich family handler, um, Brad Brewman, rejects conspiracy theories. Now this is a very, very important part of the puzzle. Because today we had the family come out and say that all well, this is a conspiracy theory through this individual. Now I want to play a video of the family themselves and you tell me if that really sounds like their words. Um, 3rd of Jan 2017, Julian Assange tells Gene Hannity Russia was not the source of the emails. He knows because he probably knows uh, exactly who the leaker was. Not probably, he definitely knows. <laughs> but um, so he knows that it isn't Russia. And judging by the tweets, I think it's totally fair that 
the complete narrative is it Seth Rich almost 100%. Uh, 5th, uh, 15th of May, Seth Rich family private eye, Rob Wheeler, claims evidence of Seth Rich laptop proves communication with WikiLeaks. WikiLeaks retweets the story. They wouldn't retweet the story unless they, you know, unless they knew it was true, because they can't come out sadly and state that yes, that Seth Rich was the leaker. Although they might do that, maybe if we get to the verge of World War Three or something, I'm not sure. 16th of May 2017, again the same classic crisis handler for the DNC, speaking on behalf of the family, maybe perhaps with a nice little 45 behind his back. In case the family don't follow the narrative. Now that might sound outlandish. And this is just my opinion. Okay, I don't know if that's true. I do not know. But I do know not one thing. And all this is incredibly fishy. It doesn't make sense. Why have this crisis handler here? And then the family narrative sounds so much different. I'm going to play that video. We'll end on that. Claims evidence is non is non-existent. Anonymous federal investigator collaborates now. This is via Fox News. Anonymous source of a federal investigator collaborates with Rod Wheeler, having witnessed the FBI forensics report. Now, I ask you this. If you're a federal investigator and you can go in there and look at the FBI forensics report, who are you? Well, you're most likely FBI. And you have the clearance to just go in there and look at it. Maybe even high-level FBI. And here we have the rest. Great, uh, great uh, summary of events by this individual. So just shout out to this individual there. Well done on that one. Now let's have a look at another key part of the puzzle. This is, um, of course, what George Webb was reporting on, uh, I guess a month or so, maybe a few months ago now. Seth Rich found conscious and breathing. Of course, this is posted by this user here. So great work bringing this again to light. Excellent. Of course, we see here in the actual incident report by the police department, um, here he was conscious and breathing. So it's just an interesting little bit of information there. Of course, there is two nuggets of details here and we can analyze these. Number one, just because he was breathing at the crime, doesn't mean he was breathing for that long and conscious. I remember, it's a bullet wound to the back. The powerful handgun is a serious wound indeed. There's um, not a lot of protection from close range gunshot wounds, especially in the back or the front and the chest areas and the back area. But let's have a look at this key part of the process. Here is the incident report. Mocha, um, sorry, police department up here in DC. Um, so here is all of this little bit of information. You see a classic nature of a lot of different officers there. And what's one common thing they have all in common? They all are wearing their body cameras. Body cameras. Body cameras. That is the police are all wearing cameras at the scene of the crime. The scene of the crime where Seth Rich was conscious and breathing. Doesn't mean he made it, but it does mean he would have made, been able to say something to the police most likely if he was conscious. Maybe he could say a few words, though if he was shot in the back, maybe not a lot, because he wouldn't have probably been able to see who did it. <clears throat> but in that case, all of this footage is obtainable. There's also no doubt public cameras, so why haven't we seen this? Well. Let's float back to the other classics throughout history, namely 9-11. Where are the cameras around the Pentagon? Where's the footage of the plane crashing into the Pentagon? The Pentagon, of course, is the most surveilled building in the world. So why is there only one grainy camera from like half a mile away? Well, that's a good question. And I don't know if this footage will come out. Maybe the next FBI director, if Trump actually does it right, he doesn't get any insiders and goes, I know there's a shortlist right now, but he should definitely go without outside that shortlist. A lot of the people on the shortlist at the moment uh, being considered for the FBI director, apart from uh, one person from Texas, are actually all uh, 
of pretty much all New York insiders. They all seem to be Clinton establishment. So Donald Trump has to go outside that, go with a wild card, I think. So there's a little bit of more information. Now here's what happened. After all this broke yesterday, of course all of these statements coming out by the federal investigator, by the former homicide detective, and with WikiLeaks retweeting these things, confirming this story, the DNC narrative is now being destroyed. And rightfully so, because it's all a hoax and fake. And of course, I and a number of researchers and everyone on the subscri uh, my subscriber base commenting on the comment section, as well as everyone around nearly everywhere knows it's fake, apart from, of course, the ideologically subverted that will follow any narrative. Now let's have a look at something. And this is how it was projected. First it came from BuzzFeed, but now it's coming from everywhere. Family murdered DNC staffer Seth Rich denies report he sent emails to RecuLeague. So the family of the murdered DNC staffer Seth Rich denies report he sent WikiLeaks emails. Now here is the classic PSYOP. Of course we know, given WikiLeaks retweeting it, there's no one in the world that would know apart from WikiLeaks. WikiLeaks retweeting this, the former homicide detective, the federal investigator, the overall investigation, the fact that the circumstances were nothing like a robbery, nothing was taken. We know that this is pretty much fake news. This is coming from the crisis handler, the DNC handler that was installed in place to speak for the family of Seth Rich. I believe in my speculation, of course, what's being reported. And sadly, let's hope this family actually finds justice and they're not under some kind of threat here. I'm just speculating, I don't know. The only thing I want to see is justice. And of course, sad for the family of Seth Rich who was murdered. I'm just speculating as to maybe they might be under duress, but I don't know. I do not want to say any further because, of course, I want to respect their, uh, their grievances here. But look how the way it's worded, and this is classic PSYOP. This is how it's worded, because coming from the Washington Examiner, another thing out of the, the state where all the politicians live, and pretty much controlled media. Family of murdered DNC staffer Seth Rich denies. So this is how they've worded it. They've worded this, if you look at it, in just a catch of the eye to make it look like Seth Rich denies report he sent WikiLeaks emails. Do you see that? Seth Rich denies report he sent WikiLeaks emails. So far, you know, you can tell a lot by the grammatical way that something's worded. Naturally, this should probably word something like family says that um, that um, conspiracy evol revolving or family state that cons that Seth Rich did not send emails to WikiLeaks, something like that. But no, they word it in a way where your mind picks it up and you start to think, well, Seth Rich said that. Of course, Seth Rich has passed on, sadly. But let's have a look at the actual family and themselves. And you tell me if you think they'd be that critical of people investigating Seth Rich to say this, or do you think this comes out of the DNC? So here we are here with Seth Rich's family here, which is posted online by on this account here. A link to this will, of course, be placed in the comment section. But let's take a quick look at it right here. This is Joel and Mary, and we're Seth's parents. And we just wanted to say thank you for helping us. We're just so warmed that you would step forward and try to help us find the murderer of our son and try to find the two that killed him and make the world a safer place. Find the two that killed him. I don't know if that's just a misspeak, but yes, uh, a lot of people are trying to find the murderer. It's kind of sad because you can tell the emotion in their face that, you know, these are really, you know, look like um, people that are just in a very uh, intense predicament here. Um, of course, the crisis handler for the DNC, extremely powerful organization, is taking it upon themselves to speak on their behalf. Seth always believed in people helping each other and that the world would be a greater place uh, if more people did. And we are just so happy 
and from the bottom of our hearts can't say thank you enough for helping us find who killed Seth. Thank you so much. So there you can see there. Now, of course, this is incredibly sad, um, but let's go back to the Washington Examiner here. Family of murdered DNC staffer Seth Rich deny reports he sent WikiLeaks emails. So does that sound something like they would actually say? And maybe they did say it. I mean, I don't know. I don't want to put words in their mouth, of course. Um, but it does seem odd. It seems like someone's influencing them or maybe perhaps bending their words. I don't know enough about it. Let's go over to things that are really escalating now and breaking very quickly. I know that I tend to rant at length. Just give me a second here. So we're back at Fox News Politics. Let's have a look because this is coming on to Hannity right now. So it's been picked up. So let's take a look. D.C. police are officially in charge of this case, but former D.C. homicide detective Rod Wheeler, who was hired by a third party to investigate the murder on behalf of the family, says Mr. Rich was communicating with WikiLeaks before he was killed. So does that make any sense for you? Because the pr private detective here, who I believe isn't even taking a paycheck on this, is coming forward and saying this at the same time confirmed by an FBI investigator. I mean, a federal investigator, I don't know if he's FBI yet, confirmed by pretty much WikiLeaks and Julian Assange. And, you know, all of this information combined leads to very strong evidence that Seth Rich was the leaker. Yet, um, there seems to be um, some kind of other projected narrative here trying to break this. Because all of this lies on the fact that is if Seth Rich was the DNC leaker, then the entire narrative of the Russian hacking story is not only false and fake, but it's false and fake in a massive propaganda psyop way. It's like an illusion breaking around people to finally reveal the ominous, ominous nature of having a monopoly of control over the media, which we've seen. Thank, thank the world that people like Hannity will come forward and just say it like it is. Of course, I don't like everything on Fox News as a whole. Of course, I, there were times in my life where I never liked Fox News, but I do respect Hannity, who has covered and interviewed Julian Assange at length, and has come out as a WikiLeaks supporter. So let's go on. Now, Seth's family has been pushing back today, releasing a statement that reads in part, quote, We are a family who is committed to facts, not fake evidence that surfaces every few months to fill the void and distract law enforcement and the general public from finding. Now, now does that seem like the same statement they would make? Just think instinctively and remember that a DNC crisis handler is actually the one that's uh, involved in managing the actual projection of what's happening here. He's been installed into this environment. Does that sound like something these individuals would say? Maybe they did say. I mean, how would I really know? But I'm just speculating here. Let's take another look. And, and try to find the two that killed him and make the world a safer place. So they spend the whole entire time here thanking people for trying to find the individual that did it. Meanwhile, out of the DNC crisis handler, we have this very cold kind of statement. Let's go on anyway. Seth murders. Now, the services of the private investigator who spoke to the press was ordered to the Rich family and paid for by a third party and contractually was barred from speaking to the press or anyone outside of law enforcement or the family unless explicitly authorized by the family. Fox News has retained a cop. So how can the private investigator be speaking now if they are not authorized by the family? Think about that. It's very, very interesting. So maybe the family authorized it, but they made that statement in order to mask themselves because they're afraid for their lives, maybe. Because if you think about it, if someone killed Seth Rich, then there's no reason why they wouldn't even go further and kill other people. Perhaps the kind of individual that would have taken out someone like that if they were working for the DNC, let's say, and this isn't just a you know, wild conspiracy, which I doubt. Uh, but let's say if this kind of person that would be ordered to do that would be a highly, um, very, very, uh, someone that had did it, done it before. I'm not saying they're like a Jason Bourne, but they would be someone that had done similar things before because they're tasked with 
a pretty high end target. Obviously not a, not a very a super high end, but fairly high end. Someone that would draw a lot of publicity. Copy of the contract signed by the Rich family retaining the services of Rod. He joins us now with the very latest. Sorry, I don't want to spend a lot of time on the technicality of who hired you. I've known sure. you a long time, Rod. You're a man of honor and integrity. Right. So this individual here, man of integrity, was actually a former homicide detective. Worked in the DNC and, of course, would have had a lot of contacts within the police department. Uh, tell us who hired you. Well, actually, I was hired by the family, uh, Joel and Mary Rich. They signed the contract. Now, the financial benefit, if there were any financial benefit, and by the way, there wasn't much, that was actually paid for by a third party that I have had very little uh, communication with at all, uh, Sean. Yeah, all right, let, let's go through this case. The timeline is fascinating here. As I played in the last segment, Julian Assange, I asked him repeatedly on radio and television if Russia was involved. Absolutely not. Now, believe him or not, he's a guy that WikiLeaks has an 11-year history and never been proven wrong. And all these right. leaks, by the way, ended up being, a lot of them ended up being published in, in places like the New York Times. That's another just important point. Of course, I can't play the whole video here. Um, but another important point is... They're trying to control the narrative by first it was a projection against Trump. Trump, Russia, Trump, Russia. And it's Trump, WikiLeaks, WikiLeaks, Trump, Trump, WikiLeaks, Russia, Russia, etc. And you can see that the framing mechanism here references two parties, major actors on the world stage. And that's Donald Trump and that's WikiLeaks continually over and over again. So it's interesting how that's played out. And sadly... Um, and I don't mean to go on about ideological subversion if you've seen my videos, but generational, you know, after ideological subversion has been stalled over the generations, there's a large group of people that don't have their critical thinking skills anymore because they've been destroyed by this ideological subversion, sadly, and they can't, they can't have that reversed. So you can still have this narrative picked up even if it doesn't have any real rationality or evidence behind it. So I guess my question is, when you look at the timeline of this, and 12 days after he was killed, that shows up on WikiLeaks, what did you discover in terms of the contacts with WikiLeaks? Right, well, that's an excellent question, and let me clear that up right now, exactly what it was that I found. Now, I have never seen the emails myself directly. I haven't even seen the computer that Seth Rich used. Here's the problem with all of this. I don't even know where the computer is. I checked with the police department. They said they don't know where the computer is. And the computer is probably being destroyed. Of course, we've had confirmation of the same thing from the federal investigator who's come forward uh, and spoke to Fox News. That was yesterday. The FBI, they say they don't have the computer. Now, where did this information come from in terms of knowing or believing, I should say, that Seth Rich could have been in communications with WikiLeaks? There was a, a federal investigator that was involved on the inside of the case, a person that's very credible. And I'll tell you, let me just say this, Sean, I don't like to suggest things without saying the person's name. But I can't say the person's name because that person would be thrown under the bus, and I can't do that. But this person, we checked him out, we have to check him out very credible he said he laid eyes on the computer and he laid eyes on the case file and he, he came across very credible when you look at that with the totality of everything else that i found in this case it's very consistent for a person with my experience to begin to think well perhaps there were some email communications between seth and wikileaks so that pretty much goes on about that we can see that Julian Assange says to the world, pretty much, you're not only on the right track, but that's pretty much what happened. Retweeted by WikiLeaks here, I mean Julian Assange here, of course follow-ups sort of by WikiLeaks here alluding to the fact of leakers, Podesta, DNC emails, etc. Of course they've offered a $20,000 reward, that's gone up to a hundred and something thousand now. But in essence I've probably spoken long enough, ranted for long enough and so I'm just going to end it there and of course I'll thank my uh, patrons once again thank you very much for your support of course you keep this operation running thank you to my subscribers everyone out there that puts a comment in the comment section and gives the video a thumbs up 
Um, so thank you to all. Um, thank you to everyone as well. Now, go out there and do your own research and decide, of course, for yourself. There's a wealth of information out there. I'll put a link to this um, heavy article, which has a pretty uh, good summary uh, in some aspects, though you have to really research and go out there and take a look. So uh, have a look at the overarching information. Go out on uh, Reddit, take a look, and just follow the breadcrumbs. In the meantime, though, this is Ed from The Outer Light. Stay safe, and I'll see you all later.